Hi, uh, I have had some problems with my, my computer this week. So now I can't show you the PowerPoint, which I was supposed to do when I was talking about puppies tonight. Um, just for my own sake, I need to, to see my PowerPoint so I know what I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's talk about puppies for, for a while. Um, because this is really when we have the chance to do the right things. Although it's not really a guarantee of, it, of, of anything, of course, because um, behavior is part, um, uh, part genes and part the living environment, of course. First of all, if you haven't got a puppy already or a dog, uh, but you have some friends who are thinking about getting a dog, please, please, please remind them and yourself how important it is to actually look for the right breed, not the right looks. Because humans, we go for looks. We tend to go for looks. Um, but it's more, so much more important that we look for the breed that would um, fit us the best. Even then, there is no guarantee, obviously. Um, so breed is more important than looks. Of course, if you are adopting a shelter dog, that's really something you should consider doing, obviously. But if you, are, if you want a puppy, have a look at the breed. Try to find what kind of breed that you think you could give uh, the best possible life because you're going to live together for 10, 12, 15 years, hopefully. And you have breeds that are bred to hunt or to guard or the uh, herding breeds. And they have some specifics if you, um, for example, how can I give some examples? If you, live in a small apartment in a big city, maybe you should not get a breed that is really into guarding. Because you might have a dog <laughs> that wants to guard everything and is barking. And that's not really the best thing if you live in, a, in an apartment. Uh, also, depending on what kind of lifestyle you have, um, I have breeds that I absolutely love I would love to have them. Um, and they're really up there on my top three list. But I, I would never get one because they don't fit me or my lifestyle. So uh, do a lot of research uh, trying to find the kind of breed that will fit you the most. Also, find a good breeder because a lot of the socialization work and getting used to an environment is starting at the breeder and now at this international site where we uh, um, speak to people all, all over the world you also have puppy farms um, in some countries they sell uh, dogs in, in in pet shops we don't have that here in norway um, but of course you have to really remember how important it is that you get a puppy with the best possible um, start in their life, basically. And the best way of doing that is to make sure to get a good breeder. And before you get the puppy, you, sh you should do a little bit of reading about dogs. I was thinking about this last week. I spoke to a couple of people who just recently got a puppy and they had so many questions because they didn't read, they didn't really, they thought they knew what a dog was, <laughs> what a dog is and what it takes to have a puppy. But it's kind of a surprise to us all. Um, even us that has had uh, that have had a lot of puppies before because we tend to forget how much work it is. So read about uh, dogs. We have a tendency to read about, I have a lot of friends that, you know, before they got children, they read about babies. They're prepared to get the baby. And that's a human baby, our own species. But yet when they got a dog, they didn't read anything. So I'm thinking that doesn't sound logical to me. You feel the need to read about 
your own breed, which you think you know, right? Because we're all humans. But you you have it. You think that you don't have to read about other breeds. Uh, sorry, not breeds, but species. So that doesn't make sense to me. And of course, I will have to suggest the book of Tudi Drugos, The Calming Science, talking uh, on talking terms with dogs, because it's all about how they communicate. And that is so important. We all know that, that communication is number one, right? So read about dogs. Read about dogs before you get the puppy and read when the puppy is in the house. Read the book twice or three times even. And then <clears throat> the first, since I don't have the PowerPoint, that I'm just going to go through this a bit quicker than I originally thought. When you get your puppy home, I think it's important to um, teach the puppy good habits and the new routines. Remember, the first week you get the puppy, normally, well, uh, at least here in, in, in Northern Europe, it's very normal to get your puppy when it's eight weeks old. Whereas in fact, in nature, well, if they were living without uh, humans, like street dogs, they actually stay with their mother and the family, the group, till they are on, on average 13 months, months, 13 months. So a little over a year on average. The earliest I've seen they leave the group is when they're about five months old. And that's already three months older than when we take them from their group. And actually, uh, according to quite a few studies, they are, it's only uh, half of them, 50% of the dogs that are actually leaving the family, family at all. So we take them to a new home and maybe if you don't have another dog uh, before you get the puppy the puppy is completely alone as that species so their body language their way of communicating is quite dif different from ours so if you have no clue or you think you don't you know <laughs> like we all did before we start uh, reading uh, about it then um uh, it's a lot of misunderstandings and it's quite lonely and could be quite frustrating for a puppy for a very very young puppy first to leave uh, the mother and its siblings and the group when they're this young and also to try to learn new routines and to try to understand us because we don't have the same language we don't so <clears throat> the first week, it's very natural that the puppy will be uh, quite calm, sleep a lot. They do sleep a lot when they're eight weeks old, you know. They sleep until they're, no, so they sleep up till 20 hours a day, 20 hours a day when they're that young. So they need that sleep, first of all, and the rest of the time you should help your puppy to get accustomed to their new home and their new environment. So getting used to new routines like uh, and establishing good habits. Good habits would be what we would call training, you know, not obedience, but training, like um, uh, not jumping on us, um, going to the toilet outside, um, not steal our food <laughs> and so on. Also, be used to be touched by people. That's why it's important to have a good breeder because this socialization starts already at the breeder when they're three weeks old. Uh, they get have to get used to driving a car. They have to get used to, um, depending on where you live, everything in the environment. And that's quite exhausting for a very young puppy. It's a lot of impressions, a lot of new things to learn. So don't take your puppy out and, and make it tired by doing a lot of different things every day, but a little by little, it has to get to know different people, different ages. Puppies are not born child friendly, even though some books are saying that this is a breed that it's really good for children. 
no, 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 don't believe it. <laughs> it's very individual and they have to be, to get used to them. They have to get familiar with different kinds of people uh, and other animals in your household, maybe cats, rabbits, uh, if you live on a farm, if you have horses or all these other animals. And of course, cars, traffic, bicycles, everything, trolleys, so on. So this, you need to find a good balance for your puppy. Um, the first week I wouldn't do very much, actually. I would just help the puppy getting adjust to its new environment. Let the puppy sleep, don't wake don't wake up the puppy <laughs> um, and let it play. If you have some other dog friends, it's good for your puppy to, to hang around other puppies, other dogs. Don't have to be all puppies. It can be adult dogs, young dogs, uh, senior dogs. Um, so let it get, you know, play is also, uh, very important for the puppy to learn to develop its communication skills with you and with other dogs. So um, they sleep um, about 20 uh, up till 20 hours a day when it's nine months old, so quite an old puppy, already a teenage dog then, they can even sleep 16 hours a day. And it's important because they're so-called social sleepers, which means um, they like to sleep close to their group, to their family. And safety is very important to get a good night's sleep or to get a good, to get a good sleep, quality sleep. So you need to feel safe. Obviously, you need to feel, feel warm or being able to cool down as well. Uh, their sleep pattern is quite different from humans. Dogs sleep 60% during the night and 40% during the day, approximately. And it's very normal for them to wake up and to change places where they sleep, maybe drink a little bit, walk around a little bit, and then go and sleep somewhere else. This is their normal sleep pattern. So make sure they get a, a lot of sleep, good sleep. You need to sleep together with your puppy. The first uh, could be days or weeks. It's up to you. <laughs> um, but as long as the puppy is new to the environment before it's starting to get accustomed to it and feeling a bit safer, I think you definitely should sleep with your puppy. If you don't want the puppy to be in your bedroom, you need to sleep on the couch in the living room or in another room on the mattress with the puppy. Because sleep is so, so important as well. If you don't get enough sleep, you get yeah physical uh, problems. You can even get sick after a while. Um, but you also get stressed. You get um, impatient. Yeah, there's a lot of things that goes along with not having enough sleep. And now it's where I really would like to have the PowerPoint because I have a lot of pictures of a room with a rich environment. Enriched environment is is really basically just indoors or outdoors places with um, with uh, objects, not not um, treats, not uh, to go searching with your nose, but objects to to explore. So that could be all kinds of things: buckets, um, uh, casseroles. <laughs> it could be all kinds of objects. That is not, of course dangerous for your puppy to to eat or to try and chew on um, and it's to explore it's it's in different materials it could could be shoes it could be clothing it could be uh, curtains you hang up all kinds of of things you can make it in your inside in your house or outside um, and that's a nice way for puppies to explore objects and it's also a nice thing to do for several puppies actually you should go to a puppy class that offer these kind of enriched environments so then they can explore things and they can play and get to know each other so um gradually um on yeah take your puppy 
uh, out and about to visit your friends not the first week i would say i would say wait a couple of weeks uh, at least one week until it has adjusted in your home and then you can take your puppies uh, your puppy <laughs> unless you're getting several your puppy to visit a friend or a family member and you can have um, people coming home to your place and please let the puppy uh, be the one that decides whether they want to greet the people or not okay this is quite important it's about choice and also people love puppies so when you are walking your puppy there would be typically quite a lot of people who wants to pet your puppy and your puppy for your puppy this is a whole new environment and a lot of people they haven't seen before maybe it's strange to you as well when you go walking your puppy don't let the people take the initiative to pet your pu puppy let your puppy decide whether it wants to greet or be petted by another person and if you read that book on talking terms with dogs you are so much more able to understand what your puppy is telling you because if you now um you can prevent prevent a lot of of problems later behavior problems by letting your puppy decide to be curious and to decide whether it wants to be petted by another person when it when it wants to be petted and how because a lot of problems uh, rises when your puppy has been um, um, lifted up or hugged or, or petted by people they're not comfortable with and then they might be fearful towards these kind of people or people <laughs> yeah it's the same with dogs let them let them take the initiative themselves to do that so give your uh, dog choices whether it wants to greet another person or a dog or not and most of the time they want to but they want to take their time and we're very impatient so we go pulling the leash maybe a little bit saying hey come come closer to that dog it's a nice dog you want to play with that dog or or a human and that's not nice <laughs> to be out in a big big world and people are just you know presenting you in front of all kinds of people and and animals that you might not feel comfortable with it could be their smell it could be the way they're using their body language leaning towards your dog and so on so uh, please um, let your puppy take its time to uh, decide um, not the time to decide sorry <laughs> take the time to approach the person or the other dog and then decide if they want to be petted by by him or her and mental activities you know puppies uh, after the first week they start normally to get more used to being in their new home and they get more active so the first week we think oh this was easy my puppy is sleeping the whole time um <laughs> but then after a couple of weeks your puppy is now used to you and the environment it sleeps well gets it's well well fed and all, all these basic things that your puppy need and then it starts to explore it starts to run around in your living room especially in the evenings they they don't know how, why they're doing it but all puppies they do get crazy <laughs> in the uh, most of the time it's the early evening uh, maybe it's excess energy or something but they but they do run around and they're biting they have really sharp teeth pariah teeth um so you need to tell the puppy you need to do what the mother was supposed to do to teach the puppy when what how and what not to bite and remember it's normal for puppies to take things in their mouth to feel what is it you know to to find out is, is it eatable <laughs> is it something i can play with does it taste nice and so on so only leave the stuff around that you are sure that your puppy can 
can put in their mouth. That means no iPhone or mobile or no expensive shoes or anything. You put that away and you put it back when your puppy gets the proper teeth. They normally fall out, the puppy teeth fall out when they're between three and four months. So the biting issue will naturally go away when they get the new teeth. But it can be a struggle when they do itch in their teeth, when they're losing their teeth. Even it might be a little bit hurtful in their mouth, and then they will be even more energetic and bite even more. So you have to teach your dog that it's not supposed to bite you, uh, and you need to do that by offering something else to chew, to bite. And um, research has been proven, has proven that if the dog stays with his mother until it's 12 weeks old or even 10, that helps in the biting inhibition teaching of the dog. So you're more likely to get a puppy that um, is better at controlling the biting uh, if you get him or her when she's um, 12 weeks than eight weeks. And lots of mental activities. You're not supposed to walk your puppy for, for long walks, like going for a walk, until they're three months old. Before that, it's more than enough to play, to, to run around in the garden or wherever you're going with your dog. You can take it somewhere. You can take it to the woods, <laughs> um, but you might need to carry it for, for a while and then put it down and let it explore and be out. There's nothing wrong with being outside, but don't take your dog on a leash and walk it for a very long time when it's um, very young. So do a lot of mental activities with your dog. Let them explore, use their nose. Uh, now I had some really good pictures with sausage trees where you put a sausage, a small pieces of sausages, sausages on, on trees, obviously quite low to the ground, uh, but not on the ground, but in the trees. So they have to sniff around above themselves. And that's good for moving in different directions as well for your body. Actually, the best way for your puppy to move is on, on different um, surfaces, like in the woods, you know, not on pavement. Um, okay, you need to help your puppy getting used to wearing a harness. We recommend harness and to walk, to follow you on a loose lead. This starts already now. They need to get used to be walking on a lead and that's your um, job to teach them properly. Don't expect this to be something that they just know. They don't. Okay. So you also need to help your puppy um, be house trained to teach him or her that they need to do the toilet stuff outside. And you do that by taking the puppy out every time after it's been sleeping, eating, drinking, playing. Many times during a day, and maybe even during the night. Not even maybe, but most probably during the night as well. Please don't use a cage or a crate, cage crate, and lock the door. I mean, if you want the puppy to have a, a crate to sleep inside, or to be inside, that's fine, but just don't don't close the door. Um, it does not make any sense at all. And it, there's really no, uh, what you call it, there's no evidence that it, it's helping them to be house trained uh, faster if they're in the crate or not. A lot of people think that, but that's just because they need to hold themselves longer because they try not to pee or go to the toilet where they sleep. So it's really not a nice thing to do to your puppy. You need to take the puppy out before it starts peeing. So <laughs> mark my words, when a young puppy is drinking, when, when your puppy wakes up and walk around, you can be sure within a couple of minutes it needs to pee, even maybe one minute. So when your puppy wakes up, take it outside. Same thing with drinking, eating, and, and playing. 
Okay, so to sum up, I'm looking at my PowerPoint, which you can't see now. I'm sorry about that. To sum up, you need to give the puppy time to get adjusted to, to you and its new group, its new family, to the environment. You need to be patient. You need to be prepared <laughs> that your puppy has a lot of very sharp teeth. Let the puppy explore and be curious. Curiosity is very important. You want a puppy, you want your dog to be a confident adult dog. A confident dog is not a scared dog, a fearful dog. A fearful dog is a problem for the dog and for you. A lot of problem behavior is because your dog is fearful. So in order to not become fearful, you need to feel confidence. You need to feel safe in your environment um, and with, with the people and, and the traffic and whatever is going on <laughs> around you. So don't stress, be patient, take responsibility for your puppy and teach the puppy good habits. And if you're able to, if you have any friends that have a dog, you know, dogs teach, they're the best teachers for your dog. So if you, um, not just any dog, you, you want your puppy to be with a dog that is behaving in a good way towards your puppy and they can teach your puppy good habits as well. Okay. <laughs> That's it. What you need to do when your puppy bites is that, first of all, puppies naturally uh, need to follow whatever moves around. So if you have your puppy in your hand like this, biting you, and you do like this, then it's a game, then, then it's play for the puppy. It gets even more funny. So you need to change with something that your puppy can bite. So a chew, a toy, whatever. And you have to have a lot of them hanging around because you have to change it quite immediately. The fast, the sooner you can provide something else for your puppy to uh, grab and to, to bite, the um, faster it will learn. So if you, for example, have a puppy, this is very common, a puppy bites your trousers <laughs> and you walk around the house trying to find a bone or something else for the puppy to chew. And while you're walking, you have the puppy uh, hanging onto your trousers. You are rewarding the puppy for doing just that. It's great fun for the puppy. <laughs> it's great fun to walk around hanging in something. That's hunting, hunting behavior for puppies. So that's why you need to have a lot of stuff laying around so you can quickly get to them and change you should have a, a breeder that knows uh, how to to provide an environment with a lot of enrichment for the puppies um, so they are allowed to go out in a room and or several rooms preferably the whole house, to explore things, to be with their family. Um, if the dogs are just in one room or even outside in the barn, that's not so good. They should be inside the house. And if your breeder is doing a really good job, your breeder is actually taking the puppies for very short drives in the car together with their mother to get them used to being in a car and so on. Um, not go for long walks or anything, but to explore, to do, to start the job that you are going to finish with socializing them and, and introducing them to our world. You need to teach the puppy a cue, how to let go of something. And before your, you can teach, before the puppy is taught to let go of something, don't take your puppy to places where it's likely that it can eat something dangerous. Stay away from those places, then you need to go somewhere else. 
I hope I gave you just a little bit of, of yeah, some ideas what you should uh, think about when getting a puppy. And the first couple of weeks, or the first, not first couple of weeks, first couple of months in their new home. So when they're three, four months old. And when they're four and a half, five months old, then they start becoming teenage dogs, teenagers. Puppies need to be fed several times a day, three to four times a day, actually. Young dogs still have to be, should be fed two to three times a day when they're one years old, actually. Not only puppies, but all dogs. If you're hungry, you it's more difficult for you to focus and you're frustrated. When we have low blood sugar, when we are hungry, it's very difficult for us to concentrate. So um, I think you should um, definitely feed your puppy. And then, of course, you can use the food as treats as well. But don't have a very hungry uh, puppy only needing to work for food. That's not fair. Okay. And it, and it's I don't think it will result in a lot of very uh, good training, basically. <laughs> okay, I'll go home and read the book. I think it's an you can get it as an ebook as well that on talking terms with dogs. So you need to your second language should not be English but a dog language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye.